greetings all and welcome to lesson 12 today we are going to talk about most popular charting tool that is candlesticks now candlesticks is arguably the oldest technical indicator it is formed around 300 years ago yes candlestick was formed in 18th century and it was discovered by Japanese rice trader. Now sources says candlestick was discovered by Japanese rice trader named Munei Sahoma to understand the demand and supply of the crop they used to produce. Now in Japan, when the trader used to trade rice, they, they wanted to understand how much is the demand or supply in the market. So accordingly, they wanted to increase or decrease the prices. For example, say today the price of rice in the market is 20 rupees per kg and a lot of people are buying it. That means there is a subsequent demand in the market and hence rice traders used to increase the price to maybe 21 or 22 so that even at that price more and more people should buy. Similarly, when the rice reaches a price where people are no longer buying it basically indicates that that is the highest price and there more supply is there than demand and then traders used to reduce the prices because of which the price of the rice used to come down now japanese farmers used these price patterns to basically understand whether demand is greater in the market or supply is greater in the market and accordingly they used to take a decision whether to increase the price of the rice or to decrease the price of the rice now the reason why candlesticks became very famous is because it converts numbers into images human brain can visualize images better than number say if i tell you my 10 digit mobile number you might remember it only for 10 to 15 minutes but on the other hand if you see a three hours movie or 10 episode based series you will tend to remember it for years now what is the reason on one hand you are not able to even remember 10 digit phone number on other hand you are able to remember three hour long movie the, re the, the reason is very simple human brain cannot process number now one number is not connected to another number however in a movie each image or each sequence of image is connected to next sequence of image because of which human brain can visualize and remember the images better than number and that is why candlesticks are very famous in Indian market or in any stock market, we have only numbers, stock price going up or down and it is difficult to remember whether the stock went up that particular day or down that particular day. However, if we can convert these numbers or this price pattern into images, our human brain can process it very easily because of which decoding the market becomes very very simple. Now another advantage of candlestick is that it works on any time frame. It works on 5 minutes chart, it works on 15 minutes, it works on one day candle. So if you're an intraday trader, you can take a less time frame like 1 minute candle, 5 minutes candle, 15 minutes candle. If you're a positional trader, you can go for higher time frames like one day candle, one week candle. I'll discuss in detail about what these actually mean in a while. So if I talk about one minute candle, one minute candle basically represents what happened in that one minute. If I talk about five minutes candle, it tells you what happened in that five minutes. Similarly, if I talk about one day candle, it basically tells you what happened in that one day. Now let us begin the introduction of candlesticks. A candle basically has two parts, a body and a tail. The thick portion is called as body and the lines above and below are called as tail. Now you might have seen candlesticks on charts if you have followed any technical indicator or any price charts. You might have definitely come across these red and green bars where you have thick body in between and two projections up and down called as tail. We are going to discuss the entire structure in detail in a while. Now obviously there are two types of candlestick, a positive candle and a negative candle. Positive candle basically tells you that the market was positive or the stock or the script went up and the negative candle is the reverse basically it tells you that on that particular time frame the candle was negative or rather it went down. Now to remember candlesticks better we are going to visualize candles as a tug of war between buyers and sellers. In our previous class we also saw that buyers are called as bulls 
and sellers are called as bears. We can imagine that there is a tug of war going, going on between bulls and bears. Bulls are trying to push the rope towards themselves. Rope is nothing but the price. If bulls win, the price go up. Bears are trying to push the rope towards themselves and rope is nothing but again the price. If the bears are pushing the rope towards themselves, that means they are winning. Let us discuss the structure of candle in detail. Now basically this is how a candle looks like. I'm sure you might have observed these on a lot of price charts. Each candle has two parts. The thick part that is in between is called as a body. And this th thin projections above and below the body are called as tail or shadow. Now as said there are two types of candlesticks, positive candle and a negative candle. The both look alike. There is no difference between positive candle and the negative candle. The only difference between positive candle and a negative candle is the color. Say if positive candle is in green color, the negative candle can be in red color. Say if positive candle is in white color, then negative candle may be in black color. Different different charts have different different color pattern. The only difference between positive and negative candle as said is the color. Now positive candle will say that the stock went up. How does it represent that? I'll show you. Now say this is a positive candle. The body in between, the body basically tells you the opening and closing price. Basically, each candle tells you four important parameters. Open, represented by O. Close, represented by C. High, represented by H. And low, represented by L. So every candle has these four parameters. Now, in this particular candle, this is a positive candle, assuming this is a positive candle, it basically tells you that the stock went up. So the body basically tells you opening and closing price. The base of the body is open and the tip of the body is close. Now notice here close is above open. That means market went up, close is above open and in this tail the upper tail the highest point of the upper tail is the high that is the highest price the stock has reached and the lowest point of the lower tail is the low or that is the lowest point the stock has reached that particular day now let me explain you what this means now here say i have a particular candle now let us say this is a one day candle that means it basically represents what has happened in the market on that particular day O now represents an opening price at 915 say market has opened at 100 rupees then it might have gone like this it might have fluctuated sometime up sometime down and then it might have closed somewhere at 102 so this open is 100 this close 102 is this and the highest price reached by the stock say 104 is this high 104 and the lowest price reached by the candle is say 98 and this is 98 so basically candle represents what has happened in that particular entire day now assume if this is a negative candle say this is a negative candle then in a negative candle opening will be above the close the only difference between positive and negative candle is in positive candle closing is above the opening in negative candle opening is above the closing indicating that market closed below the open price high and low remain same that means same market has opened at 100 rupees then it went up and then in a while it went down and then it closed somewhere at let us say 90 7 the 97 is your closing price however highest price is say 102 102 and lowest price is say 96 so this entire day's movement is marked in a single bar or a single candle now this is the importance of candlestick it basically helps you visualize what is happening with the price now these are the most simplest type of candlesticks and are also called as long lines yes long lines are the basic candlesticks so a positive long line looks like this as said open is below the close 
and high and low are the tip of the upper and the lower tails respectively similarly we have a negative long line where opening is above the close and high and low remains same now positive long line indicates it is a bullish signal negative long line basically tells you that it is a negative candle so the summary of long line would be this is how the long line represents open price lowest price close price highest price the entire day's movement is represented in a single candle similarly a negative long line would be something like this where you have open close low high everything represented in a single candle now just like long lines there are many different types of candlesticks let us talk about another pattern called as morubuju now these are all japanese name because they were invented by japanese farmer marubuju in japanese means bald who does not have hair so these are candlesticks without tail or basically they are bald they only have bodies so a positive morubuju will look something like this yes so notice it does not have upper tail nor lower tail so we know that the lower price is the opening price and the upper price of the body is the closing price now you might be wondering then what is the highest price and the lowest price so it is very obvious that if there is no tail the opening price itself is the lowest price and the closing price itself is the highest price similarly if i want to talk about negative marubuju then it also does not have tail so we have open and close in the reverse order and here open itself is the highest price and close itself is the lowest price let us look at this pattern in detail this is positive morubuju this is negative morubuju and let us talk about this pattern in detail so first let us talk about positive morubuju so this is how a positive morubuju looks like open close low and high so market might have started at let us say 100 rupees now 100 itself is the lowest price that means market never went below 100 it might have fluctuated but it never went below 100 and it kept going up and during the closing period of the candle market closed at the highest price if it is a 5 minutes candle between 915 to 920 market might have fluctuated a lot but at 920 the price of the candle was highest say 102 so the journey of stock from 100 to 102 was absolutely one sided market started at 100 never came below it kept going up and closed at the highest point so this is basically maruboju now if i imagine the tug of war between bulls and bears in maruboju as soon as the session started bulls started to push the rope towards themselves bears never came into action that means the session was completely dominated by bulls and hence positive maruboju is a strong bullish signal similarly the reverse is true for negative maruboju but before that let me show you an example of positive maruboju now notice here i have marked positive maruboju here once a positive maruboju without any tail has formed you see how the stock has gone up the session from here started to be dominated by bulls after the session the stock just kept going up similarly let us talk about a negative maruboju now this is a negative maruboju we have open above the close and open itself is the highest price close itself is the lowest price so it is very obvious that market started at let us say 100 100 itself is the highest price it never went above 100 and then while closing the session it closed at the lowest price so it was a one-sided market which was completely dominated by bears 
Now in the tug of war, again you can imagine that bears pulled the rope towards themselves, bulls had no chance and that is why negative Moru Boju is a strong bearish signal. So whenever we see a negative Moru Boju on chart, we can expect the stock to fall down. So here is one chart where you can see that I have marked negative Moru Boju. Notice the red candle has no up or below tail. Once this candle is formed, after a while, market just slipped down. Similarly. Apart from Maru Boju, there are a lot of other patterns. The next pattern that we are going to discuss is Hammer. Now Hammer are bullish candlesticks where lower shadow or the lower tail is minimum twice the size of the body and has very small or no upper tail. To simplify, I can say Hammer exactly looks like actual Hammer. Now let me show you how Hammer looks like. This is how a positive hammer looks like. It has a small body and a big lower tail. It does not have any upper tail because if it, it will have an upper tail, it will not look like a hammer. So a hammer, a positive hammer or a negative hammer basically has a body and a big lower tail. The lower tail should be at least twice the size of the body. Yes, the tail you see here, this should be twice the size of the body. So if the body size is X, the tail size should be at least 2x. Only then we call this as hammer. Now, what are the opening, closing, high and low price? It's very simple. If it is a positive hammer, then the lowest point of the body is your open. The highest point of the body is your close. And the lowest point of this tail is your low and the close itself is the highest price. Similarly, this is a positive hammer. If I talk about negative hammer then this is how a negative hammer looks like the only difference is the change in opening and closing price open is above close is below low and high remains same so what does these hammers signify let us try to understand that in detail now suppose say you see this pattern on the chart this is hammer so this is a positive hammer where you have open close high and let us say there's a big tail with low so open is here so let us say market started somewhere here then went down to maybe say 94 then came up and went above the opening and closed at 102 so 100 is your opening 102 is your close so 2 rupees body and 100 to 94 6 rupees tail so tail is thrice the size of the body so that means it is a good hammer as said hammer should have at least tail double the size of the body here we have thrice the size so it's a good hammer now let us try to understand what does a positive hammer indicates you can see here that if i want to uh, talk about in this uh, with the reference of tug of war let us say 100 is your start line from the start line market went down that means bears push the rope towards themselves so market was bearish in the first session and then bulls tried to push the rope towards themselves from here bulls got the strength they pulled the rope towards themselves in with such a force that it went above the middle line or above the opening price and closed well above the open that means in a single session bears dominated the first half they were then overthrown by bulls who dominated the second half and that is why hammers positive hammers are strong bullish signal so in a downtrend so when the market is falling down if you spot a positive hammer if you spot a positive hammer in a downtrend it basically signifies that the market is going to go up as simple as that now similarly let us talk about what a negative hammer indicates say this is negative hammer say this is your opening price this this itself becomes your highest price and the market has closed below opening and this is your lowest price so let us say market started somewhere at 100 rupees then never went above it went down to 94 but while coming up it closed at a price lower than opening price say 98 this is the only difference in the positive hammer the market closed above the opening price in the negative hammer market closed below the opening price so as usual the first half of the session was dominated by bears 
Then from 94 levels, say bulls tried to push the rope towards themselves. Bulls tried to go above the baseline that is 100, but they were unable to do so. That means bulls are putting their strength, but they are comparatively weaker. So in spite of being a negative hammer, I can say this is a weak bullish signal. Yes, that means bulls are trying to go in their yard or push the rope towards themselves but they are comparatively weak now what does this signify it signifies that if the market is going down and you see a negative hammer then it signifies that bulls are trying to come up but they are weaker so we need a confirmation that the bulls have now completely dominated how do we get that confirmation? We have to wait for one more candle. And if the next candle is positive, be it of any shape, if the next candle is positive and closes above the previous candle, that means in the next candle, bulls have now overtaken the bears. And after this, we will have to buy. And from there, the stock is expected to go up. So in a positive candle, if, if there's a positive hammer, you need not wait for the next candle. You can directly take a trade. However, if it is a negative candle, we will have to wait for one more candle. And if that candle is positive, only then we take a trade. If that candle is negative, we discard. We did not take any trade. This is a simple example of positive and negative hammer. Now you might be wondering that what if hammer comes in an uptrend? I have shown you the example of positive and negative hammer where both are coming in the downtrend. Now say if what if the hammer comes in an uptrend? Say market is going up and you see either a positive hammer or a negative hammer. So then this hammer is called as hanging man. This is no longer a hammer. This is now called as hanging man. A hammer in a downtrend is called as hammer, but a hammer in an uptrend is called as hanging man. So whenever you spot a hanging man, then there are again chances of market either staying flat or slightly going down. So hammer in an uptrend basically signifies that the market is going to fall down and hammer in the downtrend is going to signify that the market is going to go up. Let us learn this with some examples. So here you can see I have a positive hammer. This green candle is a positive hammer. After a positive hammer is formed in a downtrend, the market was falling down in a downtrend. When a positive hammer is formed, I need not wait for anything. I can just immediately buy after the candle completes and you can see market has gone up. Similarly, in a downtrend, you can see that there is a negative hammer. Then I have to wait for next positive candles to close above this hammer. So the second candle did not close. However, the third candle crossed and closed. So I'll buy somewhere in this level and from here market shot up. So yes, in the negative hammer, we have to wait for one more candle, whereas in positive hammer, you can take the trade immediately. I hope this concept is clear. The next pattern that we are going to discuss is shooting star. Now shooting star has several names. It is also called as gravestone or it is also called as inverted hammer or basically ulta hammer. Now gravestones are bearish candlesticks. Now here we have upper tail which is twice the size of the body and has no or very small lower tail and negative candle is more bearish. I'll explain you how, what it means basically. So this is how a shooting star looks like. Now you can see clearly it is an inverted hammer. So the property of shooting star are exactly opposite to hammer. So in this particular shooting star as we can see the upper tail is twice the size of the body and we have the base of the body as open and close very obvious then we have lowest price equal to opening price and the highest price is the highest point of the upper tail now this is a positive shooting star similarly we have a negative shooting star where open and close are opposite that is close is below open and 
highest price is the highest point of the tail and the lowest price remains the same that is close is your lowest price so let us discuss these concepts also in detail say i have a positive gravestone so as i can say this is open close low and high that means let us say market started somewhere at 100 rupees started to go up and went all the way till 105 and then came down and closed at say 102 so you can see that first half was dominated by bulls and then when bears tried to push the rope towards themselves or when the bears tried to push the price downwards they could only go till 102 they could not even reach the halfway mark that means bears are trying to push the price towards themselves however they are right now currently weak so positive shooting star is basically a weak bearish signal yes it is a weak bearish signal so what do we do when we see this is an uptrend when the market is going in an uptrend and when we see a shooting star a positive shooting star it signifies that bears are trying to come in the rally but they are currently weak so we wait for a next negative candle so if we see a next negative candle then from there stock is expected to go down now the concept is exactly opposite to hammer similarly if you see a negative shooting star then let me just mark open close low and high so let us say 100 is your opening price market went up all the way to 105 this time prices went below the open to somewhere say at 98 so that means the first half was dominated by bulls but then the second half was dominated by bears and the market completely fall down well below the opening price that means the first half was dominated by bulls however bears came into the picture and they pushed the price or the rope towards themselves in the tug of war and now bears have emerged victorious so a negative shooting star is a strong bearish signal a strong bearish signal and in an uptrend whenever you see a shooting star that is bearish or that is a negative shooting star it basically indicates reversal that means it is basically we are basically expecting the stock to fall down in a downtrend if you see a shooting star in a downtrend they are almost useless however in some cases they, they basically tell you the market is going to go flat or there might be some scope of trend reversal but remember shooting stars are mainly effective in uptrend and hammers are mainly effective in downtrend so here is one example of positive shooting star you can see after a green shooting star after a positive shooting star we need a confirmation by next red candle right so once we got the second red candle now we know that this uptrend can convert into downtrend and you can see after a while the market has actually fallen down similarly similarly you can find shooting star with negative inverted hammer also on the charts moving ahead now let me show you what happens in a downtrend so let us say this in a downtrend you will see a negative shooting star being formed right so in a negative shooting star has formed in a downtrend it basically indicates market is going to be flat or again it can go towards upwards however during downtrend the shooting stars are not that effective right so after a while if you see that there is another shooting star that is positive followed by next negative candle so this uptrend is going to exhaust and then convert back into downtrend so this is what is explained by shooting star moving ahead the next pattern that we are going to talk about is doji now doji is a candlesticks without any body it only has tail remember maruboju is a candlestick pattern with only body no tail and doji is a candlestick with only tail and no body so a doji looks something like this you can see there are only tails on both the side and then in between there is a small uh, line that represents body or basically that represents there is no body 
so now you might be wondering where is the open and close and the high and the low it is very simple that the open and close are same that is why there is no body and the high is the highest point of the upper tail and the low is the lowest point of the lower tail this is called as doji <coughs> now for the doji to be established the upper and the lower tail should be almost same it should look like a plus sign and not a cross sign however sometimes there are stock movement where the stock moves something like this where uh, the upper tail is very small and the lower tail is very big right so this is not called as doji this is not doji this is a fly similarly you might have candle pattern like this where you have a small lower tail and a very big upper tail now again this is also not a doji this is also not a doji only a neutral candle with a, which looks like a plus is doji dojis are neutral basically dojis are basically neutral i'll tell you what doji represents so let us say this is a plus sign where you have open and close same and this is high and this is low so let us say market started at 100 rupees went up to say 102 came down to say 98 and then went again up to 100 and closed at 100 itself that means market closed where it actually started now in between first session was dominated by bulls then bears tried to push the rope towards themselves then bulls tried to push the rope towards themselves at the end the rope did not move anywhere in the tug of war the rope stayed where it stayed so basic where it's uh, the rope stayed where it started so in a tug of war when we see that the rope is not moving we declare that the two uh, two opponents are having equal strength similarly when a doji is formed we say that both bulls and bears are having equal strength or equal force neither of them is able to pull the rope or the prize towards themselves that is why doji is neither positive nor negative it is rather a neutral candle and what does a neutral candle signify it signifies that in whichever direction the current trade is going on from there the trend is going to reverse let me explain this by a simple example suppose say if the market is going up and you see a doji it basically represents that the stock is going to fall down now what is the logic behind it so suppose say if the market is going up so let us say this is a bullish candle or a bullish pattern where bulls are dominating so if bulls are dominating that is why the prices are going up that means bulls are majority they are above 50 percent let us say bulls might be 60 or 70 or 80 percent in the market because of which the stock is going up when a doji is formed it basically marks that the bull strength has decreased and bear's strength has equally increased to make it 50 50 so doji marks an entry of bears because of which stock is expected to fall down and the trend is going to become bearish now again in the bearish market we expect the bears to dominate that means bears are greater than 50 percent bears may be 60 70 or 80 percent and when a doji is formed again bull strength has increased from this point onwards bears strength has decreased now because of which we are expecting the stock to go up so that means doji works as a trend reversal now you can see one example where the stock has slightly gone up and then in between there was a doji here you can see this is a doji and after a doji the trend reversed and the market went down there's one more example of nifty where the stock went up then one doji and after doji market reverses down and the trend reverses so doji acts as a trend reversal pattern so these are the few candles that we have discussed in this session in the next session we are going to discuss about two candle pattern so all the pattern that we discussed today were one candle pattern where only one candle was enough to tell you in which direction the stock is going to go in the next lesson we are going to talk about two candle pattern where we need at least two candle for confirmation now which are the two candle pattern that we are going to discuss one is engulfing engulfing basically there are two types of engulfing bullish and bearish engulfing second is called as harami now in japanese harami basically means pregnant so how does this pregnant concept 
works on candlestick we are going to discuss in detail with examples in our next lesson so these are the two patterns that we are going to discuss in the next lesson thank you so much for watching this video spread knowledge because it's free and if you like our video do like subscribe and share it with your friends and i'll see you in the next video thank you so much